My name is Tina. I am our Canva connection, I guess you could say. Amy's our Canva rep, but we So I Tina, kind of... you're you're the district <laughs> Canva pro here. I know. After I coming to all the sessions. I know. I am definitely getting there. So this is our team. If you guys have any questions, you can feel free to reach out to any of us um, on the screen and then we can help support you. There are some of us that are uh, different pros and parts of Canva, so we can definitely direct you to the right person. All right, Tina, thank you so much for kicking off this afternoon session. Um, if you're just joining us, welcome. We're going to be talking about Canva's video suite today and creating videos again in your classroom. Also talking about student use when it comes to creating videos. Um, if you go to that link um, that Tina has so graciously put into our um, Zoom chat, I just want to demo this really quickly. So the one that says Canva slides, it's like a bit.ly link. You'll just scroll down here to today's date and then you'll be able to access these slides. So again, if you like having the slides open, I just like to demo that really quickly um, so you feel confident about where you can access um, that information. I will try to keep up this Q&A doc um, as well as the Q&A in Zoom. So um, lots of ways to kind of get in touch with me here. And Tina does an amazing job helping me if I miss a question. Um, so we are definitely here and we want to make this as interactive as possible for you all. Um, before we kind of hop in, I know um, we don't have like the full webinar chat open. However, I just was curious if anybody here on today's session has used Canva to either create a video or some sort of animation. So if you haven't, that's okay. Um, I'm just curious if anybody has and if you kind of be willing to share, if you go to the Zoom um, Q&A, if you'd be willing to kind of share, I know it's not really a question, more of a statement here, but uh, if you'd kind of tell us about the video or context in terms of which you created. Um, so while we're kind of waiting to see if any of your colleagues have used Canva to create a video or an animation um, in the past, I just want to um, take a moment and really quickly say hi to you all again. I'm Amy. Amy. Oh. I'm going to stop you for one second. I did open the chat so everyone can throw it into the chat. Oh. If you guys want to throw it in there for us, uh, that would be great. Sorry. <laughs> no, that's perfect. Thank you so much, Tina. Okay, so disregard what I said it for this little open. bit. If you want to go to the um, Zoom chat, you should be able to put in your Canva comfort level. And then if you've ever um, created a video. So for instance, if you're like, Maybe I didn't create videos, but I had my students create like an introductory video at the beginning of the school year. Um, you could put that in. So again, just curious if you all have used Canva to um, create. Oh, yay. Okay, so you've used an animation before, but totally still learning. I hear that. <laughs> okay, seeing some twos come in, some ones. Okay, Brittany, love it. Played with video, but feeling like need to build some skills. Got it. One, one, two, awesome. No videos, but played with animation. I love that. Okay, so we're gonna have some time to play with both videos and animations today. Um, thank you all so much for hopping in. It really does help me know kind of who is um, a part of our learning crew here this afternoon. Um, so excited to be with y'all. Again, I'm Amy. As we're going throughout the training, um, if you have questions, if you want to see something again, please, please put it in the Q&A of the Zoom or the Google Sheet so that um, I can be sure to address it um, and either answer your question or show what you wanted to see again. Um, so without further ado, let's just kind of hop into our session because there's a lot to kind of cover in Canva's video editor today. We're gonna take a super quick tour of Canva and just kind of 
look at Canva for education as kind of like a larger macro level perspective in terms of what you and students can do in Canva. And then we're going to dive for the rest of the time into Canva's video editor. We're going to talk about some terminology, use case scenarios, and then we're going to go into editing. So I'm going to be showing you all some things on my Canva side, and then you'll have time to play and create in your own Canva video that you're going to have a chance to make today. Um, again, we'll wrap up around four, let me make sure I got this, yep, 4.50 to ensure you all have time to do time cards and all of that good stuff. So y'all, let's dive right in. What is Canva for Education? If you've been coming to either previous live sessions or watched one of the recordings, you all know that Canva is your go-to spot when you're looking to create something visual. So this could be a poster, a video, um, a flyer you're looking to share with families, you name it, Canva is the place to go. You have access to our whole visual suite. Today's excuse me, today's session, we are only going to be in the video editor, but I just like to point out, if you haven't joined uh, our previous sessions, please go back and watch those recordings where we talk a lot about the other Canva um, document types that you can create. Canva for Education is 100% free because we truly believe education is a human right. Um, so we want to empower everyone to create collaborate and communicate in the classroom and beyond. We're gonna have some time to play and kind of search in Canva's template library today for different video templates. But I just like to point out beyond the video templates that we're gonna be exploring today, you also have access to over 80,000 education specific templates. So these are posters, brochures, flyers, um, newsletters, you name it. Again, education specific, in addition to over 600,000 other um, templates. Think Cam if you've ever heard of a Canva Pro account, you have all of those Canva Pro templates for free as well. In addition, you can also access Canva's Element Library. So we'll be going through that today. So those are graphics, images, videos, as well as audio, um, songs, and sound effects that you're able to add to your videos. Um, we'll play with Canva's background remover and um, talk about resizing our videos as well. Now, the thing that we love about Canva is when we allow our students um, to become the creators in the classroom, they're going to be practicing skills that are going to stay with them um, long beyond their time in their K-12 learning journey. So things like teamwork, accountability, flexibility, creativity, communication, collaboration, and some entrepreneurship skills. So that is Canva for Education in a nutshell. Again, today's session is solely focused on videos and our video editor, but I like to paint a picture, a broader picture, so that if this is your first session with us, you know that there's more to Canva beyond just the video editor. Um, so if y'all could take a moment to log into your Canva for Education account, you should be able to also access Canva if you're in your district email, Tina, if you want to correct me here, but you should be able, I believe, to go to your Google Waffle and then see Canva as one of the apps that appears in your Google Waffle. That is correct. Okay. If you're having login issues, if you could let Tina and myself know in the Zoom Q&A so we can try to assist on the back end. But again, this session is meant to be, um, is meant to have you in Canva creating. So it's imperative that right now we kind of take a pause and everybody can make sure that they can get into their Canva account. If it's your first time logging in, you might see some windows appear that are asking you like, what do you wanna do in Canva? Do you wanna invite people? All of, all of these random questions might pop up. You'll just try to either close out or skip through that so that you kind of land on Canva's homepage. Okay, I'm not seeing anything come in, so I'm hoping most folks were able to log into their Canva account. Just gonna go over some um, video kind of overview here in terms of 
how do you find templates to get started in videos in Canva? So I'm going to kind of pop out for some of this and demo the some bits live. Um, so on the Canva homepage, there's essentially three main ways I want you to dabble with or experiment with in terms of getting started. So the first way is coming to this video icon on your Canva homepage in this blue kind of header box here where Canva is asking you, what will you design today? You're going to see this light purple video icon and you can select that. And then you're going to see as you kind of scroll down here, all of these different video formats. I want to just take a quick moment right now to acknowledge that some of the video formats are named after certain social media accounts. So I'm very aware that it might say Facebook video, Instagram Reel, TikTok, YouTube, all kinds of things. However, I want you to think creatively how you could maybe use something that was originally made for TikTok but instead convert it into a project for students. So all of these pre-made video templates for social media accounts, again, could easily be modified to be used in an educational setting. And it's almost like you're speaking your students' language. They never have to be posted to a social media account. So I personally don't have TikTok. I don't have a TikTok account, I guess I should say but I've created TikTok videos in Canva and played around with them, edited them up. Um, and then I just share them out either uh, allowing folks to come in and see it via a link. So again, it never has to go to that social media site. So don't be turned off by some of these social media video templates. I do encourage you to play around and kind of see what's out there to kind of um, spark some imagination. The other thing I would like to point out is, oh goodness, I lost my train of thought, y'all. Well, it will come back to me. Um, so again, be a risk taker, check out some of these different uh, maybe video formats you maybe haven't seen before. The second way to get started, so again, that's the Canva homepage, hit the video icon, and then kind of play around with these different video formats. The second way to get started is by coming into the template library. So you're gonna see the template library on the left-hand side of your Canva homepage where you see templates. So I'll click that and you can scroll down here and you'll be able to access all of our educational templates by grade, subject area, or resource type. So I can select resource type scroll over it's a couple of scrolls over but you'll see videos and now these are just the educational video templates so again if that's kind of what you want to um hone in on and practice with today um, so you can hover over the top right corner of any one of these video templates select those three dots preview this template You'll see all of the different scenes of that video down here. Sorry, mine's taking a minute to load here. And then you'll see that if you scroll down in this preview window, the 25 closest templates to the one you're currently previewing. So you can do the same thing, hover over the top right corner, preview this template. And then from there, if you like something, you can hit customize this template and pop into the video editor. You could also on the left hand sidebar in the Canva template library, you could scroll down to this video category and expand and it's just going to be all of the same things I was showing you all these different um, video formats here that you might see on the Canva homepage, um, but now you're kind of in the template library and can kind of see them a little bit differently. So again, there's multiple routes in Canva to the same destination. I wanna give you time to play so you actually can see the different type of video templates that we have. The third and final way to kind of get started here is just by typing in what you're looking for. So maybe I'm gonna do an about me 
video for our demo. Um, and I want to find like a fun about me video template. There's thousands of video templates when you're just searching. So you can use this all filters button and kind of um, filter it down from there. So maybe I want something minimalist and simple and Maybe I'll kind of keep it at that. And I can hover over the top right corner again of any um, template here, hit those three dots, preview the template. And maybe this, I don't love this color scheme, but I kind of like the elements. So maybe I'll kind of select this one and kind of edit it up from there. Even though it says back to school student intro video, remember you can turn anything in Canva into what you're kind of dreaming up. So I can very easily turn this into a back to school teacher video. So I can hit customize this template and then it'll pop me into the Canva editor. I know I've just shown y'all a lot. So from the Canva homepage, remember three ways to get started. Select the video icon then select any sort of these videos and it will give you a blank one or you can scroll down and see more video templates. You could go into the Canva template library on the left-hand side of your homepage or you could just type in what you're looking for and use your all filters as well as your preview, um, this template button so that you can kind of narrow down your search. I wanna give you time so you can actually see what videos are out there. So maybe type in the subject area that you teach and then add video at the end and see what comes up. If you have a specific unit coming up, um, like forces or ancient Rome, type it in and see if there's any pre-made videos. Um, so again, I just wanna give you time to play. Um, our goal is at the end of three minutes, if everybody could have any video open in the Canva editor, you know you're going to be in the Canva editor because you're going to see this teal, blue, purple ombre bar across the top here as your header bar. And then left hand sidebar is going to be black tabs. So that's how we know we're in the editor and no longer on the Canva homepage, which has a fully white background. So again, your goal is to explore and then choose one video template to have open that we're gonna edit up together. So again, three minutes. And then if you could have something open in the Canva editor. All right, so if you can find a good stopping place, again, a couple more seconds if you haven't decided on a template to get started on. Um, I just wanna kind of frame our next, you know, about 40 minutes together, why we're kind of so focused an entire session on a video editor. I think it's really important to frame this discussion. Um, so I normally hate reading off of slides, but for this one, I don't wanna mess it up. So I'm gonna read it to y'all. This is fascinating to me. 90% of information transmitted to the brain is visual and visuals are processed 60,000 times faster in the brain than text. People retain 80% of what they see and only 20% of what they read. So when you're thinking about, okay, why would this be important to perhaps incorporate some more videos or visuals into my classroom? It's because you're allowing more students to access information. If the majority of the information being sent to your brain is visual in nature and it's being processed faster by creating more visuals or um, videos in your classroom, you are truly setting up your students, colleagues, families to be successful. April, I see your question. I'm just gonna talk about one more thing and then I'll go back and demo that really quickly. Um, I just want to talk about video terminology here really quickly because we're going to go into the editor here in a bit. But if you want to split or splice a video um, scene, you can split it into two separate pieces. 
We're also going to be going over how you can trim or cut a video scene from one end or the other. You can flip your videos in Canva, which is awesome. Say you have um, yourself mirrored and then kind of like the text or wording behind you kind of gets mixed up. You can flip that in Canva so that the wording um, will be going in the correct direction. At the bottom of our Canva video editor, you're going to see our timeline. The other thing I want to re really quickly um, showcase to you all, if you can look at the Zoom screen and see where my like teal circle is, when you're looking at your timeline in the Canva editor, this triangle and then vertical black line is called your playhead. Um, so when I say like bring your playhead to the front, that's what I'm talking about. And you can pick that up and move it as you're playing around with different editing um, and seeing kind of like what's, how that impacted the overall feel of your video. In your timeline, you're gonna see different pages and instead of slides, even though they look like slides, in when we're editing videos, we call them scenes. Um, B-roll is any sort of background video. Remember, you can bring in your own B-roll and upload it, or you can use from Canva's Element Library. A-roll is going to be anything, maybe students were interviewing firsthand sources and they upload those videos. That's going to be the student's A-roll when they're um, creating in Canva. So I'm just going to pop out and we're going to demo these one by one. So again, to recap really quickly, the three ways you can get started searching for a video template is just by hitting the video icon on your Canva homepage and either selecting one of these video types and creating a blank one of that, or you could um, kind of scroll down and see all different kind of options down here. You can also go into the Canva template library on the left-hand sidebar of your Canva homepage, or you can just type in what type of video you're looking for in the search bar where Canva's asking you, what will you design today? You'll just hit enter after you type in the type of video you're looking for. And then I really encourage you to use this all filters button so that you can kind of filter it down and don't have to scroll through 130,000 or whatever your search results may be. And then remember, you can hover over the top right corner of any video template, select those three dots, preview this template, and then you can kind of see that video as well as the 25 closest videos here. Remember, this is super low stakes right now. Nobody is going to see the video that you're playing and creating in today. So if it's not exactly perfect or exactly the thing you want, if you could just select something now so that we can all kind of move on together, that would be fantastic if you haven't selected. I know I always have such a hard time choosing a template, um, but remember, low stakes here. First things first, when you come into your Canva editor, Remember, you want to change the name of this random video template to something you're going to remember. So if you want to change it to Canva Demo Video Day or Canva PD on video or whatever you want to kind of change it to, you can put your cursor in across the top here. Depending on your screen resolution, you may not see this rectangle where you can kind of clear out the random template name that the designer gave it. You can also go to the file drop down menu so you can select file and just put your cursor at the top, clear out that random name, and then rename that something you will remember. Please learn from my mistakes. It's really frustrating when you're trying to find something in a couple weeks or a couple months and you're searching in your Canva projects and it's not coming up because you forgot to change the name and it's saved as somebody else's random template name. Next up, I just wanna go over a few things. If you didn't know, any Canva slideshow can be turned into a video 
and any video can be turned into a Canva slideshow. So let me show you that really quickly across the bottom of Canva in your footer. Excuse me, I should say across the bottom of the Canva editor in the footer, there is this button where it says duration. So if you click that duration button, it essentially turns those scenes of my video back into slides. So you could take pre-made slides, maybe you already made lesson slides and you just wanna turn it quickly into a video that students will kind of watch or could be able to loop rather than having to advance through the slides. So again, you could take these slides, hit the duration button and it's gonna turn it into a video. So just like to show you that you have that capability when you are looking across your timeline at the bottom here, remember this is really easy drag and drop. So if you wanna rearrange different scenes, you can pick them up and kind of rearrange. If you want a new scene or page, you can just hover your cursor in between any two scenes and you'll see this addition sign here, this circle. And that's gonna allow you to just add in a blank page. If you like the kind of design of a page, but you're gonna change the text, um, you can hover over the top right corner, hit those three dots, and I could potentially duplicate this page. And now I have two of the same scenes, but I'm just gonna change this out instead of my favorites. Maybe I'll type about where I'm from or whatever that may be. I see the question in the chat, can you upload Google Slides to make a video? Yes. Um, so let me show you all that really quickly. That um, we kind of went over that in a previous session. So sorry, I didn't really go into that much this session, but from your Canva homepage, you can go to your projects tab. And then in the top right, you'll see this add new button and you can select import from app and then you can link your Google Drive. So you could bring in any of your previous Google Slides. Um, it's gonna take a minute for them to upload and then you'll see them um, here and then you would just open them and then go into the Canva editor and hit that duration button to turn those Google Slides into a video. So I know that was quick, um, but again, you're gonna do that through your projects tab from your Canva homepage. The other thing I just want to show you all, of course, no, thanks so much for the question. The other thing I want to show you all, and before I give you a couple minutes to play, is I want you to play around with transitions, okay? So in between each scene or page, again, you can put your cursor in the middle, and there's these two buttons, one on the top where you can add more pages or scenes, and one on the bottom. This is your transition button here. So right now there's already a transition applied to these in between these two pages. It's called a line wipe that was kind of put there by the person who created this. Now, just because it's there doesn't mean you have to keep it. I can hover my cursor over each one of these transition options and it kind of is gonna give me a preview. Actually, let me delete this page so y'all can kind of see this a little bit better. Let me hover over in between these two pages, hit the bottom button, which is transition. And then as I hover over each one, it will simulate what it would look like from one that one scene to the next scene. Once you select a transition, then you have like lots of options. You can play around the duration. You can play around the direction of how you want it to flow. And you also have this button at the bottom if you want to apply that transition between all pages. Um, so you have some options there. Last thing I kind of want to show you all that I, I showed in a previous session, but um, I mentioned I forgot to mention it here when we first came in, was I told you all that I liked this design, but I don't really like the colors. Um, instead of kind of clicking each element by element and then coming up and changing the hex code color, I can come um, to my design tab, go to styles, scroll down to color palettes, and then I'll click see all. 
And in a couple of clicks, I'll be able to change this maybe to a color palette I like a little bit better. You can hit the arrows again and kind of remix which colors are dominant versus supporting colors. If I like this one, I'll hit apply to all pages. And now I have that whole same design, but it's like in a color scheme that kind of represents me a little bit more than that um, kind of like more drab, I guess you might call it color scheme. Um, so again, there's really a lot of options to kind of customize this. A lot of the editing stuff, I'm not going to go into a ton today because it, it was in previous sessions, but I did just want to show you with that really quickly. So I'm going to, I'm going to stop talking now. I want you to all to play around with changing the order of your scenes. Remember, as you're playing and clicking buttons today, you can always hit this back arrow and it will revert back to previous formatting. So again, if you do something and don't like it, hit the back arrow across the header. I want you to practice maybe adding a new scene by hovering in between two pages. I want you to practice playing around with different transitions. So see what it looks like to have a circle white transition versus a chop transition. Um, add different transitions between different scenes. And then also if you wanna change your color scheme or your fonts, go up to design, go to styles, and then scroll down to color palettes and font sets. So those are like the four main things. Um, and we'll come back together in two minutes after y'all have had some time to play. All right, I saw a question come in, but I need a little bit more context in your question. I'm, I meant when you upload. Yeah, I'm just confused what you're uploading and where you're uploading from, <laughs> because there's a lot of different ways that you could potentially upload something. So I'm curious, are you talking about uploading like Google Slides? Or are you talking about you're trying to upload something. Okay, you uploaded from your Google Drive. Okay, so in your projects tab, it is a little annoying, I will say, when you upload sometimes from Google, you'll get this kind of black bar right here saying like uploading your Google Slides, and then it will give you the option to like view it. Sometimes it then doesn't show up in your des recent designs, which is frustrating. But if you know the name of those Google Slides, um, let me see. You can also type in .g slides because anything that you come in that comes in from Google Slides will be named that. And then you should be able to find it in your designs. So I know that doesn't... <laughs> I know that's a little annoying here, but again, if you know the name of what you just uploaded, or if you don't remember the exact name, just type in .g slides and it should come in. Of course. Perfect, perfect. Yep. And then you'll just click on it, whatever you uploaded, and then it will take you into the Canva editor. And then remember, if it's Google Slides, you're going to want to hit this. Sorry, this is like a random... Google Slides deck I have, but you're gonna wanna hit this duration button at the bottom to now turn those Google Slides into a video for you to play around with. Okay, hope hope that um, kind of answers that. Okay, next up we're gonna talk about animations. Um, I wanna first go over animating text and then we're gonna go over animating objects. Again, you're gonna have time to practice each. Remember, just like other kind of design or creation platforms, there these are all kind of individual text boxes. So you're just gonna click in. Obviously, my name is not Henrietta. I'm just gonna say my name is Amy or Ms. Delaire, or whatever you want it to say. Now, essentially everything in a scene can be animated. However, I really encourage you to think critically about does this animation add understanding to my audience or and help them to understand? Or does this animation in conjunction with the other 72 things I have animated on the page distract my audience? So again, that's all I'm gonna say. 
I, I'm not going to tell you not to animate things because I'm going to show you how to do it. I just would really encourage you to think critically about what you're animating and what value add that animation has to the overall understanding. So let's kind of get into animation. Um, so you can select any text box. And a lot of times in a pre-made template, when I select it, this one individual text box in my horizontal toolbar, where I see this button with these three circles kind of bursting and moving um, is our animate button. Now it's confusing because if you're using a pre-made template, a lot of times the designers have already added an animation and therefore it doesn't say animate, it says the name of the animation. So it might be these three circles and then it says something like burst or fade or pop or typewriter. So it has the name of the animation. So you're gonna click that button and then you're gonna see down here, you can, just like with the transitions, you can hover your cursor over these different um, text animations and kind of get a preview of what that would look like. Again, these other text boxes are already animated. Right now, I'm just looking at the hello text box and seeing if I kind of like that and changing that around. Once you select one of the text animations, you then get um, just like with the transitions, a lot of options here to customize it. So do you want to animate on both enter and exit or just one or the other? You can bring the speed down or speed it back up. If you're animating like a paragraph, you might not want to do that character by character. So you might want to do that instead by word. So you have all of those kind of options there. So again, that's animating text. Just click that text box to highlight it come up to the animate button or look for those three circles and then play around with the different text animation options. Remember, this is your time to play and click buttons and it doesn't matter. So click things if you hate it, no worries. Just hit that back arrow and select something else. The other thing I wanna show you all is animating any sort of element. Um, so maybe I want to bring in something that kind of shows who I am on this intro page. Obviously, this is not me, so I can delete this video um, and we can go over that in a second. Um, but I'm going to search for a black cat here. Maybe I'm going to find a graphic of a black cat. And... Um, <laughs> Oh my goodness, these are hilarious. Okay, this one's cracking me up here. So I've got this black cat. If you didn't know, I'm obsessed with my cat. His name is Winston. So if I was creating this to um, introduce myself to families, I'll probably have something about my cat in there anyways. Um, so the really cool thing is, is I could click on any element and again, animate it, but please think critically about it. So I'm gonna click on this black cat. I'm gonna come up and hit the animate button. And what I want to show you is obviously it's all of the same animations that you just saw for text. It's now just, um, I guess it's not all of them. It's less, but you still have these like pre-made animations that when I hover over them, it kind of shows me what it's going to look like. The other thing I like to point out is that we now also have motion effects. So if you want something to maybe flicker or pulse, so I was working with a teacher who was doing like a movie of the cardiovascular system. So showing where once the blood leaves certain chambers, where that's going. And it was super cool, but the, they wanted the heart chamber to be pulsing. And so they added kind of this pulse effect that's at the bottom. They're called motion effects. But what I want to show you all is this create an animation button. So it's this bumblebee button at the top where you can create your own custom animation and kind of customize that pathway of that element. Canva can make me look pretty good. I can smooth it out, make it more steady. This is also really fun. You can orient it to the path. <laughs> You can speed it up and slow it down. 
I will say from like a use case scenario, I was demoing something that wasn't as silly. The other day I was doing something on forces and I grabbed a marble. And the really cool thing was, is I was able to animate the marble as well as add that motion effect so that it was rotating. So it was rotating as it was going through my custom animation. So again, think about how cool that would be for students to like show what they learned in this um, forces like lab or experiment and be able to kind of recreate that electronically showing that that marble was not only rolling end over end but also moving in a certain direction so super cool i'm gonna stop talking because i want you all to play again click on different text elements come up and animate and practice and then animate any sort of um element graphic element anything you want shapes you can highlight anything and then come up to animate and animate it. Have some fun now. Now's the time to go wild. And then when you're creating something for your class, think a bit more critically about how many animations you wanna have on your page. All right. So if you can find it in stopping place, we're gonna go into the Canva recording studio next. So I'm gonna demo that and then y'all can have some time to play. Um, <clears throat> So from your Canva editor, you're gonna access the recording studio by selecting this uploads tab. And then you'll hit the record yourself button. Okay, give me one second. Sorry, I have to turn my Zoom camera off. My computer gets very finicky. Okay, I also have two screens, so sorry, I'm looking over to the side. I'm going to demo recording myself, but I just want to point out when you go into the Canva recording studio, you can also record your camera and screen. So if you want your students to do like a certain process and you want to narrate what you want them to do and what you want them to click on, you could do that. You could also just screen record. So to be quite transparent with you all, I used to use a different application for all my screen recordings. I would download them and then upload them into my Canva projects. I didn't realize that I could do that all right within Canva. So you can just screen record um, and then it will upload it right into your Canva project and you can edit up that video from there. So just like to point that out, I'm gonna record really quickly. Hi families, welcome to my classroom. My name is Ms. Dallaire and I'm so excited to be working with your students this year. Here are some of my favorite things. Okay, from here, you can see each video. I clicked on two different pages in the recording studio. Canva will snip those for me. I don't have to do anything, which is awesome. And they're gonna live here in my upload so I can use them again in the future. A few things about this video, Canva, puts the video into your video in a circle frame. So you have a couple of options. If you don't like this circle frame, you can detach your video by just selecting it, hitting those three dots. So I'm, I'm, not sure, I'm not sure if it was my audio or not. I didn't hear, you said oh. Canva and then it stopped. Oops. So. I'm okay. not sure if it's just me or everyone else, but can you repeat it just in of case? Of course, of course. Okay, so Canva is gonna input your recorded video in this circle frame. If you don't like this, you can delete it or kind of detach it from this frame. So click on your video, you'll get this floating toolbar and then you'll click the three horizontal dots on the right-hand side. And you have this option to detach video. So I could just delete this circle frame. I have this video, this frame here, where I deleted that other random person and I could just plop my video in there instead. I could also find a different frame in my elements um, and if I wanted a different shape. A few other things that you're able to do is, again, let me move, oops, hold on. Let me move my black cat out of the way. 
There we go. Um, click on your video and you can come up to edit video. I could add a filter onto this recorded video. I could do background remover on this video as long as it's less than 90 seconds. Um, I could also play around with adjusting all kinds of things when it comes to what this video actually looks like. So again, you all saw, I do not have some sort of fancy green screen behind me. I'm just in a normal room with furniture and Canva does a pretty great job of taking it out. So now this is just gonna be like me um, here kind of without a background. The other thing I wanna show you is that any video you record in Canva now comes with captions. So you can click on your video, again, click those three dots. Oops, sorry y'all. And at the very bottom of this menu, you should see this option, show captions. It does take a couple of seconds to load, so give it a second. And then I'm gonna bring my playhead to the front here at the beginning of my video. I'll play this and we'll see all of this, all of the animations as well as my video recording kind of come together. Hi families, welcome to my classroom. My name is Ms. Dallaire and I'm so excited to be working with your students this year. Okay, so just to give you like a quick snippet, I don't know why my captions didn't show up. I need to play around with that. They should be showing up. Hi families, welcome to my class. Interesting. Okay, sorry I don't know that why they're not showing up. Um, this happened to me earlier today as well, so something might, must be going on, but normally the captions kind of should pop up right there. So I wanna give you time to go into the Canva recording studio. Again, left-hand sidebar. You're gonna hit um, uploads, record yourself, and then record yourself, maybe hit two different scenes or pages and see how Canva snips that video for you. Um, and then you can detach your video from that circle frame, put it in another frame that might already be on your page, or you just don't need it in a frame and you got options here um, and play around with kind of um, selecting your video and then selecting those three horizontal dots to see this whole menu here. You can also select your video and highlight it, come up to edit video, and that's where you'll find background remover. Okay, so take two minutes and then we'll come back together. All right, so I know we're approaching almost the end of our time. I want to show you all a few things really quickly. Um, if you haven't had a chance yet to explore Canva's Element Library, again, this is where you're going to find anything and everything to add to your video. Remember, you could search for anything and then hit videos to see all of these videos that Canva's Element Library allows you to use. Just hover over any video and you'll kind of get a preview of that moving forward. So maybe on this blank page, I'm gonna put this random cat video here and really show my families how obsessed I am. Um, you could put this in a frame or you could right click and replace the background. The other thing that you could do that I feel like not a lot of folks do, and again, you can trim this by bringing one corner, one side of that scene down, so it's not 30 seconds of cat. Um, but I could also bring the transparency of that video background down. Oh, I also have the color, the green behind it. Let me change that to white. And I could have text over this, so again, Lots of things that you can do to kind of manipulate videos within your video, if that makes sense. And I realized I didn't give you all a lot of time to kind of play in our element library and search for different types of videos that you could then add to your creations. Remember, once you apply a video, you can still, just like I was showing you all before, hit the edit video. You could use this scissors button to kind of snip. Um, certain parts you could have you can hit this playback button and i could speed the video up or slow the video down 
So this is pretty cool. Like if you record your screen and you're like, okay, I know this workflow pretty smoothly, but maybe my students need to see it at half speed. You record yourself or your screen just kind of doing that workflow. And then when you upload it into your Canva video, just bring the playback speed kind of down. You can also hit this button to play on repeat. So when you're on that page or slide, it will continue to play and repeat there. Other thing I wanted to show you all is again, you can flip any video. So I have my video highlighted. I can come up to my horizontal toolbar, flip the video. Um, again, it's just su super easy to ensure that, especially if you have letters or anything with writing, that it's not kind of mirrored and backwards. Okay. Last thing I want to show you all in the Element Library, oh my goodness, one minute left, is that we have tracks of music as well as sound effects. Um, so maybe I'm looking for a cat meow. And I'm typing that into my Element search bar. I kind of scroll over and then I want to select audio. Um, it's kind of like iTunes where you can kind of hover over it and play it before you commit to it. <clears throat> Uh, okay, so maybe I like that one. All you do is drag the track down and then you can move it anywhere you want in the scene. Now, this is tricky because this track is only one second long. So maybe I want um, a longer one as well. So this one's 36 seconds. So maybe I'm gonna bring this one down here as well. So again, you can layer different tracks. You do have to manually, I don't want the cat to be meowing for my whole video, just this one little scene here. Um, so I'm gonna kind of cut that track down. I can double click and then move which part of the track I want highlighted for those 12 seconds. And then the other thing is, is when you're layering audio tracks, you can click on one of the audio tracks to kind of highlight it. And you can come to the volume button. I could bring it down or even above 100. Um, so maybe I'm going to bring this one down just a tad bit. So I'm still going to hear this other random meow and maybe this other random meow. Um, I'm going to bring up a little bit. Okay, so now let me bring my playhead to the beginning and we'll kind of play Ms. Dallaire's intro video here. Hi families, welcome to my classroom. My name is Ms. Dallaire and I'm so excited to be working with your students this year. Okay, so a little bit silly, but just kind of wanted to show you all all of the different ways that you can layer audio. I know I'm showing you sound effects and animal sounds, but you can type in like a genre or a type of music and you'll be able to find a track as well. So Brittany, I'm seeing your question here. Is there another way to show all the items in a list when clicking the three dots of ha instead of having to zoom out of the window? I have my window set at 100, but I can only view all the items when I zoom out to 80. So. <laughs> As you can see, I don't know the answer to that <laughs> because every time I do that, Brittany, I have to zoom out of my resolution as well. So I can look into that. If we could maybe put that in the, um, in the Google Doc and I can ask my product team um, because the way that I solve the issue is what you're already doing, which isn't solving the issue. It's just kind of a workaround for now that's multiple steps. Um, so let me investigate and see if there's another way, again, to kind of go over um, Brittany's question is when you click on certain things, is there a way to kind of see all of the items without having to change your screen resolution? So I'll look into that for you. Okay, last thing, when you're in your Canva video editor, Canva editor, you can resize this video. Maybe I made it to project in my classroom, but then also I know some families are gonna maybe access this via their mobile device. So maybe I wanna 
copy this and have Canva magically turn this into a vertical mobile video as well. So you could do that and just Canva will copy and resize it for you. You don't have to do anything and all of the same information is going to be there. And then you could share that because you might know that families are going to watch this on their phone anyways. Um, so just kind of like to point out that any video like format you start with, you can resize into a different video format. All right, I know I'm three minutes over and I really wanna make sure y'all have time if you have any specific Canva questions and or um, taking over Tina to kind of showcase to make sure everybody gets credit for being here before five o'clock. My last quick pitch to you all is in these slides. I know there's a lot, but there's really awesome like student project ideas not only how you could use video in your classroom, like photo slideshows or micro learning, um, as well as how students could reflect in class in video, document their learning. You could do a quick um, jigsaw video activity. Um, and then lastly, how students Brown bear. can demonstrate their learning with video. So there's lots of really cool things. I just wanted to give you more time to play, but please check out those other slides as well. All right, Tina, I promise I'm done. Take over so folks can make sure they get credit for being here. Awesome. Thank you, Amy. As always, I appreciate it.